Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be covering the Rivian infotainment screen. Now this is in an R1S. It is the same for the R1T and the software version that we are running is version 23.26.0. So this is the most recent software update for the Rivian as of June or sorry, July 26th, 2023. Starting off on this page, here's your bottom row. This is your map. It is not Google Maps though, which it is map box based, which is fine, but it could be better. There's a satellite button over here so you can get satellite view and toggle your charger view and you can select the network so you can do Rivian, Electrify America. Interestingly, you can choose Tesla even though this can't charge on Tesla chargers, which is interesting. And you can filter by the speed of the charger. You can also search right here. So if I want to search for Kane's chicken or something like that Kane's chicken tap right here all your search results come up and the maps work pretty well down here it'll show you your distance your time your time of arrival your remaining range on arrival it'll show you some addresses stuff how long it's open till you can favorite it or call them and you can click start right here you can adjust the preferred range on arrival so it can add uh, charging stops to where you can add more range to when you get there. So let's say if you're going to the middle of nowhere, you want to be like, oh, I want to have 40% left, so I have some buffer. Well, you can set that and it will add chargers. To make sure you hit that target charge percentage. Very good feature. And this definitely changes based on which drive mode you're on. We are in sport currently, but that will change depending on which drive mode you are in. Up here, you have your lock. This will lock the doors. Next to it, you have your driver settings. So this is where you can adjust your steering wheel. And side mirrors using the buttons on the steering wheel and these are your driver profiles for um, your different owners that is not my name that is the owner of this r1s but these are your driver profiles next to that is home link you can add a garage door opener here's the settings for your garage door openers and stuff like that pretty basic next to that you have alexa built in so I can tap that and say, Alexa, Alexa, set the temperature to 69 degrees. Hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, okay, let's try this again. Alexa, set the temperature to 69 degrees. Okay. There we go. 69 degrees. Nice. Next to that, you have notifications. So you can see that GearGuard recorded an event recently, which is useful. So you have your notifications tab right there. Up here. You have your Wi-Fi hotspots. You can turn that on and connect to the different devices. Next to that, you have Bluetooth. You can connect your phone through Bluetooth. You have Wi-Fi, so you can connect to a Wi-Fi uh, network to update your car. This is the temperature, your cell service, and your time. So that's your top bar. So down here, this is to adjust your temperature control. So if I tap here, it'll bring up the climate menu. Over here, there would normally be another one of these, but since there's no one in the passenger seat, it doesn't show up, which makes sense. In this climate menu, you can toggle your climate on and off. You can move your electronic air vents around, which I don't really like that much, but you can do it. You can control your heated steering wheel, heated seats and ventilated seats. You have seven levels of fan speed, automatic fan speed, which is also useful. It has auto, ah, it's getting noisy in here, but it has automatic fan. Up here is pet comfort. You can turn this on and it'll keep the car nice and cold inside. While you run into the store, so you can leave a pet in the car. And here's your things for the passenger side. And you can go to the middle row seats to turn on the middle row heated seats. You can lock out the rear screen so people cannot adjust the temperature. And you can turn off the console vents or the floor vents. In the third row, you can turn off the third row vents. And the third row has three, four fan speeds just for the third row. Next tab, you have a shortcut here for your ventilated seats. I wonder if that changes based on the season or not. But anyway, next to that, you have your front defroster, your rear defroster. If I tap the front defroster, you can do low defog, tap pressed again. You can do high defrost. Next to that, you have your rear window defogger. Next is the music tab up here. Here's your FN tuner, eh, sorry, FM tuner. You can slide along here to tune between FM radio stations and you can click this button to save this radio station if you want to go back to it. No AM radio, just FM because electric motors interfere with the AM frequencies for the radio. Here you can enter in a specific channel, tune, and turn off the radio. Next tab, Spotify. So you can connect your Spotify account and listen to Spotify through the Rivian. Now this is good because there is no Apple CarPlay. Yes, there is Bluetooth, but Apple CarPlay would have been better for this. But the fact that Spotify is built in and then you can link your account is really good. Next up, you have TuneIn. TuneIn, I honestly don't know what the purpose of it is. It's just like a different music service. But you do have Tidal, so if you want some higher quality streaming music. You also have um, Amazon Music. 
and Kindle and stuff like that. So you can connect to Amazon Music and listen to Kindle books if you want to or audiobooks from Audible. And then down here, you can connect your device via Bluetooth. This button here is your equalizer. So you can move the audio around in the car that's to recenter. And then there's a bunch of things that you can do with the equalizer that I don't know what they mean, but you have different presets here for different types of music. You can do 3D surround sound in here, which is pretty and pretty incredible. And you can do a dynamic sound adjustment. And that's all for the radio tab. Next tab, drive modes. So this is where you change your drive mode. So if I start the car, putting my foot on the brake, I have all purpose mode, sport mode, conserve mode, snow mode, off-road and within off-road i have all terrain soft sand rock crawl rally and drift and then i have tow mode this can tow 7700 pounds which is pretty good in every mode over here is where you can adjust your ride height different modes have different levels of ride height that you can select from but this one has high standard and low but there is also highest high standard low and lowest as an option and in snow in all-purpose mode, you have an auto ride height button, which is very useful and will automatically adjust the ride height as it sees fit for different speeds on the highway. Here you can adjust from soft or stiff suspension. You can also change between standard and high regen, although you can't lower the regen more than standard and standard is still pretty aggressive. So I wish there was a lower setting and then you can turn off stability. I like that you can turn off stability in every mode except for conserve, I believe. Next tab the Rivian tab, but the little Rivian. Here you can open your hood. As you can see, the hood is now opening. You can tap it again to close it. Here you can open your charge port and it'll open. And then you can open your lift gate with this button down here. You can lock and unlock your doors from here as well if you see, if you want to. Over here, you can adjust your steering wheel and mirrors. Of course, you can do it in this tab if you want to, but you can also do it in here. You can fold the mirrors, you can unfold the mirrors, and then you can lock the passenger windows. Down here, you have a button called car wash mode. Car wash mode will basically make sure all the windows are closed, make sure all the uh, door handles stay in and the charge port door won't open. So, and it meets all the parking sensors and stuff. So you can go through a car wash and it will be better suited for a car wash. That guy almost hit that truck over there. <laughs> okay, next tab. Here's your cameras. 360 view, front view, not too bad. You have side camera angles on the fenders and the back view. Also, you have back view for the tires as well very useful although they aren't the highest resolution though i wish they were higher resolution but twist incoming Whoop. not what i wanted to do but okay but this is now customizable this was not customizable before this is added recently so you can drag apps and add them to your dock which is super impressive let's see how many we can add so i can add my energy so i think it's only five max but your frequently used app that isn't here will appear next to it. So if I open the energy app, that will appear here as my most recently opened app. But speaking of which, here's your phone app. So this is where you can pair your phone and there's nothing here yet because I haven't connected one. This is your gear guard system. So gear guard's really important because it keeps your vehicle secure in case if anyone damages it and can also record while you're driving via the new drive cam, which was released relatively recently. Plug in a hard drive into the center console USB-C port and it can save your driving incidents if you get in an accident or something. It's extremely useful, and it shows all of this beautiful footage. Interestingly, the cameras look better on this than they do on that, which is the biggest weird... Like, look at how clear that looks versus this. Why is it so much different? I don't know. That's strange. But you do have drive cam, and it looks great. Motion cam also looks great. Although I think it has maybe a few more angles, or is it the same amount of angles? I don't know. But you can also star them if you want to. Press this button. Here's your gear guard settings. You have the little Yeti guy, which is pretty... Blah, really... Blah, I can't talk. Frick. <laughs> which, <coughs> which is pretty cool, and you can tap on him, and he changes, which is kind of neat. You can turn on your drive cam. I have to set it up, which is not my car, so I'm not going to, but... You can turn on the incident mode, you can turn on motion cam, and you can change it from always on or off at home, and you can turn on the alarm, um, which is, this is neat that you can disable the alarm, because in a lot of cars you can't disable it, so that's useful. Next one, camping mode. This is really neat. This allows you to turn off all exterior lighting to where you can sleep in the Rivian and it won't 
leave any of the lights on and it won't be loud and it'll turn down the climate control so it's quieter on the outside which allows you to sleep in it more easily you also have you can turn the display off so i don't yeah so see now the screen is off and then if i press the brake then it comes back on you can turn on the floodlights that are on the sides of the mirrors which are pretty neat. Energy use, you can have it stay off, which will turn off everything. Normal is just like kind of how it is right now. And stay on will make sure everything stays on, including the climate control. And this button is really useful. This allows you to completely level the Rivian. So it'll be completely flat to sleep inside of. So if you press that button, which I'm not gonna press because it takes a while to do so, it will level the car and be completely flat to sleep in, which is super useful. You can also turn on the outlets from here. So you can set a timer and the max you can do is three days for the outlets. So that's good. Owner's guide. This is like the owner's manual for the Rivian. There is no like physical owner's manual, but this is the owner's manual. I'm not going to go through all of it because there is quite a lot in here, but here's all your quick links. You have locks and keys, display, climate, basically all the thing here, range. You can go into this and stuff, introduction, uh, driving like there's a lot of stuff in here i'm not going to go through it all because it would take literal years for me to do so yeah that's the owner's manual next tab we're not going to go to settings yet we are going to go to energy so this is your energy tab this shows you your battery charge on this side it shows your remaining mileage and it says the range is based on the drive mode you're in so it will change based on if you are in the eco mode which is conserve all purpose or sport you can also reset the history so it can recalculate the data. Over here is your latest charging session summary. So this is when we went to a charger earlier and this goes to show which energy is going to what. So this is going to the battery pack and this is going to like the heater or the AC and then these are like lights and stuff. Here you can open the charge port from so you can open it from here as well. You can close it again. This shows your start, your charge percentage, which is a nice number right now. You can go over here and change your charging limit. This is new. It used to only be 70, 85, and 100, which was kind of limiting. Now you can set it in increments of 1%, and it'll show your projected mileage at that percentage. Very useful. You can turn on the outlets again from here, and you can schedule charging. Uh, you can, like delay the charging if you want to, or you can only have it start charging during certain hours. So if you have off peak and peak hours, you can charge in those lower cost hours. Over here, you have your amperage. So this is uh, your AC charging amps, which is only 48. I thought it would be 60 in the Rivian because the battery is quite big, which 48 is only 9.6 kilowatts. I would have thought it would have been more. And then the final tab, settings, the most important one. So here you have in the connect tab, you have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, hotspot, garages, and basically everything up here except for the dock. This is for the camp speaker so it is locked right now but if i unlock it then i can remove the camp speaker Ooh. i can remove it and use it and then when i put it back in then it shows up and then it can lock and it locks to make sure that it doesn't fly around when you're driving next tab vehicle this is your access tab so you can configure if you want when you press the unlock button on the key fob do you want just the driver door or the all the doors i would put it on all the doors and this is unlock when you go to park. So do you want uh, just the driver door or all the doors? Or you can do it not auto unlock on park at all. You can do proximity locking. So you can do the Rivian key fob or the person's iPhone um, that you connect to the car for keying. Not for keying, for um, to use as a key is what I mean. And you can confirm this for always off or, or always on and off at home. Auto relock. The, the doors will lock um, two minutes after you unlock them in case you want that to occur or something. I don't know why you would. You can kneel the vehicle. Huh. Kneel vehicle upon parking. I didn't know this. Vehicle lowers to low ride height in all purpose conserve and snow mode for easier entry and exit. Kneel pauses when doors open. Huh. This is room. Okay. Roomy entry and exit. Driver seat and steering wheel move automatic. So this is basically easy entry stuff. Okay. Auto folding mirrors and stuff. Hood operation. Okay. Next tab. Driver plus. So you can change all your driver plus settings. Forward collision warning. Automatic emergency braking. Lane departure warning. Park assist. Basically everything that's related to driver plus. Next tab, units, change all the units. Next tab, updates, you can see your updates and you can see the change log for the updates, which is useful. Next tab, service, you can do the wiper service, so you can service your wipers or something, I don't know. Tire change, so you can change your tire more easily. Uh, parking brake release, so this allows you to roll it on a flatbed. Show and tell mode, which is very interesting, it allows you to keep all the lights and stuff on. Um, 
while you're parked so you can show it off if you want to. And this is a shipping mode. And driver position calibration. Recalibrate driver's seat and steering wheel to use profile. Oops, wrong button. Uh, interesting. Exterior lights. So this just shows you like light bars react when you lock or unlock, light bar when charging, entry lights, uh, guide lights, charge port lights. And that's basically all for the vehicle tab. Next, apps. So this is your HD radio. So turn this off in very, very, uh, in areas of bad reception. And then this is your A word tab. I won't say the word cause it'll do that, <laughs> but it'll, this is all your that settings. Driver keys. So this shows you the owner's keys and you can see um, all the things. Oh, he needs to change his key fob battery according to that. This thing only has 750 miles. How does he have to change battery already? I don't know, that's strange. Data and privacy settings. You can scan this QR code and it does something. Precise location steering, navigation. Um, this is just to help uh, Rivian get more info to improve the car over time. Here's the legal thing. This is just like all the copyright stuff. And then finally, about. So this is your about vehicle. You can see your odometer here, which is only 749 miles. This car is incredibly new, but you can change the name of your vehicle. So I can, I can name it um, Barack Obama or something. I don't know, but you can do that if you want. Here's your trip A and trip B. I don't like where these are located. They're buried in a menu and they're hard to find. I don't like how they moved it to the settings. I think it was in the vehicle tab before, but now it's in the settings. Anyway, you can see your trip A, you can see your average speed and your efficiency and stuff, which is not very efficient, but I will forgive it. Model, you can see it's an R1S all-terrain adventure package. Um, so this must have been one they once or after they added the all-terrain as like a option uh, instead of it just being the tires. This is your VIN. So this is a seven, uh, the seventh, the 7,200, ha, huh, it was number 7,228. It was the, that one. You know what I mean? This is the ocean coast interior, which is the white, which is awesome. I would highly recommend it. It's the best interior color. Exterior color is Canyon Red, ba large battery pack, quad motor, all wheel drive. Um, 20 inch all-terrain dark wheels and normal Illinois assembly. Over here, you have volume. You can just adjust your volume and stuff and you can press this and it'll adjust the volume for different things. So like the navigation and uh, the, and then over here is your passenger airbag off. And yeah, that's basically the entire center screen. Now let's show you this screen. So this screen shows you basically your driver assistance settings, your parking sensors, your gears, your power meter, and your speed, state of charge percentage, your mileage, your ride height, your drive mode, uh, all your warning lights. And you can cycle between a map, a efficiency graph, which is not very efficient. 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour is actually really bad. And then your tire pressures, which you have to drive to see. But yeah, that is basically an entire review of the infotainment system in the Rivian R1S, or Rivians in general, that is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like and subscribe. We'll see you all next time. Bye.